so we're hopefully hauling out on Monday. It's Wednesday today. We still got so much food on the boat from when we were planning to cross the Pacific. We just haven't been able to go, get through it. I've been away. Everyone's been away. We're coming up with a plan on how to haul out and how to do it um, the best way to straighten the boat. Just waiting for one last response from the naval architect, Vincent, from uh, Lagoon. And hopefully he comes back with the A-OK -okay on my plan on how to do it. And I'll tell you about that soon. This here is also the cause of all of our issues. Look at that crack, guys. Both sides. So it's cracked along here. This whole bit of ply has come up. And then the whole hull has come up and the bridge deck has gone down. So we've got cracks up in the corners here as well. So we need to fix that both sides and under the under the floorboard down here too. Um, so the boat has seriously moved. You can see, look at this wall here guys. It is so bowed. So we took this piece out. We took this piece out to have access. And then this this wall here just went boom. Straight bent in like that. So it's nothing we can't fix. I've even got a response from Lagoon saying that we can do this. This is not the end of the world, but we're gonna have to like cut this beam out reinforce all of this, glass all of this with epoxy, cut those out, put new ply all around there and glass it all in. We're using epoxy with Biax glass. Um, this is the main problem area, but it extends throughout the rest of the boat. So every single one of these frames and bulkheads, we're gonna go through. If there's any cracks in the tabbing, it's coming out and we're redoing it. Jamie just started bringing some of this rice out of the bilge and this rice has obviously been sitting there a lot longer and this rice has obviously been sitting there a lot longer than we were expecting and it is now infested with these little bugs these little weevil looking things totally infested <laughs> so these are probably going to go I don't know what do you guys think that's what we should do. We should ask some locals if they want it and they can like clean all the bugs out of it and eat it if they want or they can throw it out. You, will you eat it? Do you want some weevils? All right guys, I'm just doing some Googling over here and apparently weevils are perfectly safe to eat. Even the eggs and the larvae. Look at this shot. <laughs> we can't eat that. We can't eat that, can we? Why not? Oh, fuck, I don't know. You scared? <laughs> no, we'll have a go, but... <laughs> Where are you in France? Brittany, is that where the Lagoon factory is? I think, first of all, you have to repair the mask bucket, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think I will send you uh, some, uh, some sketches of, uh, of this part, and the reinforcement you have to do. <laughs> Because today there are two holes for piping and wiring, yeah. which are just in the area where the, the loads are uh, transmitted from the, the beam to the hull itself. Yes. Just near the just near the door, and here uh, is the weak point of this boat. Okay. And they have made some. Uh, they have doubled the, the, or tripled the plywood under the holes. But at the level of the hole, there is almost no reinforcement. Right. Put some uh, double bias epoxy uh, glass fiber yeah. on it. Yes. And there, we're sure that this area is going to be very strong. Exactly, okay. Second thing is uh, what we've seen on the top door frame, which is a uh, you send the pictures of the top door frame where yeah. there is a, a breakage which is a, a diagonal. Yes. Of the, yeah. But it looks like the glass fiber reinforcement is not, it's just a vertical and horizontal. Yeah. So it is a, and, and 
we would like to have the same uh, uh, reinforcement on the diagonal itself to be sure that the uh, rounded part is uh, reinforced too because when we see the pictures the, the breakage start from a plywood without any reinforcement inside of the radius here. exactly okay guys i haven't really explained to you properly what's happening in in um in terms of uh, our relationship with Lagoon. So let me explain. Um, about a month ago, I got a call from Thomas Gailey. So he is the director at Lagoon. And he felt like he wanted to help us. Uh, he watched a few of our episodes and um, he said to me that he really um, admired our work ethic and that he wanted to see us sailing again. So long story short, he put me in touch with Vincent Provost, who is one of the leading naval architects for catamarans and trimarans in the world. Um, this guy designed this boat and all of the Lagoon 450 range. Um, just an incredibly talented man. And I just got off the phone with him now and he seems willing to sort of talk us through this repair step by step. So as you can imagine, I've just got this overwhelming sense of relief that I'm not doing this alone. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, again, I stress that this is a special circumstance that they're making for us. Please, if you are a Lagoon owner, go through your dealers. Um, I just happen to be in a very remote place and it's a catastrophic failure that I'm going through. So that is why they're assisting me. Um, and I'm so, 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 so grateful to, to be having their assistance. So that's what's happening, guys. We're gonna um, start by just getting all the weight out of the boat. Um, we're gonna get a container on the hard hair. We're obviously at Linton Bay in Panama. And we're going to haul out and we're gonna support the bridge deck kind of like we did in Guatemala. So there's the mast bulkhead and then there's the engine room bulkhead back there. If we support those two bulkheads under the bridge deck, then we can slowly loosen the shrouds and hopefully the hulls will come down. And we need to get this boat back to its original shape. Vincent said we need to check that wall right there and this wall right here for when they are perfectly vertical. When they are vertical, that means that the center line of the hulls are now straight up and down. If I put a level on there now, which I haven't done actually, which I'm going to do, um, I'm sure that we will find that those bulkheads are angled out at the bottom. The hulls have clearly come up. Everything that we know about the boat is suggesting that, but I've never put a level on this, on this wall. So let's see what happens. Holy fuck. Here, let me get that. Can look. you see that bubble? Yeah. It's focusing. Vincent said that when this boat launched, this wall was level. Now it's that far out. So I'm going to pull the bottom of the level out until we're level. That's it. Right there. And look at the gap down the bottom there. It is about one and a half inches. Wow. So what you're seeing, what you're seeing on our level right now is where this wall needs to be once we've eased the shrouds and dropped the hulls down. So you can see that is a lot of movement. Incredible. Actually see your floor. Oh, so once we've got the hull straight up and down again and the boat is straight, then we're gonna start the repairs and we're gonna focus on the mast bulkhead. He said he's gonna send me some drawings of how to reinforce that. It's basically gonna be involving uh, marine grade plywood and epoxy resins with biaxial glass. And I have all of those materials on a ship coming here as we speak. 
well, Vincent actually said to go past original, repair it so that when we tension the shrouds back up and go on the water, we should end up level. I have 100% confidence that this boat will be going back in the water stronger than it ever was by introducing epoxy instead of this glue that they use. If you don't know already, epoxy is a far superior material than polyester. It is much more expensive and I've got the best of the best. I've got West Systems um, epoxy in the on, on the ship right now. So it's as exciting. This is this is huge. This is I don't know of anyone that's had to do this before personally. So we're just going to document this the best we can and um, hopefully we get through unscathed. Watch this space. So one of the things that we want to do now is um, locate these bulkheads before we even think about hauling out. So I'm going to climb under the boat in the dinghy and start tapping around and find these bulkheads exactly where they are. So we have to find this one here which is um, uh, in line with the mast and the one back there which is at the front of the engine rooms and I'll mark them with blue tape and then we know that once we go up we'll put the top of these pylons directly on the bulkhead so I'll make sure that's all marked up now exactly 53 centimeters from this edge and we're right on that bulkhead Bulkhead. Right there. It's a start. It's right. And that is the bulkhead. sitting here doing a little bit of editing and Jamie's been down in the forward port cabin and he's just come up and what you say holy shit this is definitely the worst piece that we've found in the boat so far but which is good at least we know where the damage is so I'm gonna go down and have a look you gonna come oh Holy fuck! Holy shit! So this is just a little bit of paneling that goes around the door frame. So there's, um, so when he took that off, it just exposed this bulkhead a bit more. We could see it from this side and we could see it from that side, but we've never seen it end on. So this is fucking crazy. This is obviously meant to be straight, and uh, that's a sandwich structure with glass each side. So we've got a pretty catastrophic failure happening here. Um, it's pretty clear that we need to just get rid of everything around it and uh, take these off. Probably cut the bad bit of bulkhead out, redo the bulkhead, um, glue it back together with epoxy, and then glass the shit out of it with epoxy resins. So it will be stronger than it was originally, but it means we have to get this out. Ooh. There's a few telltale signs, like this floor here has come up a little bit on the edge. So we knew that there was some sort of stresses happening here. And uh, to see this is pretty bad. But at the same time, it's quite, quite reassuring that we're finding these things now and it's explained exactly why we're here and we didn't cross the Pacific. So everything happens for a reason. But that's crazy, man.